Hello everyone, in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make an input remapper in Godot 4. We will also be going over how to save the remapped inputs to a data file. To get started, let's go ahead and create a new control node scene. We'll just call this input mapper. I'm going to go ahead and set the anchor offset to full screen. Now if we head over to our project, project settings, in our input map, I have an up input and a down input map. And now we need to create corresponding buttons to those inputs. So I'll create an up remapper button. Let's go and scale that up. I've also gone ahead and made a button for the down remap. Let's create a new script. Let's call this remapper create. And here we need two variables. One will be an export, which will be the action name, which will be like up or down. Let's set this to a string for now. And we also need to reference the input mapper. So let's go ahead and control and drag that over to here. Now let's go ahead and create a initial function. So underscore init. And we will set our toggle mode of our button to true. And since we only want to accept new inputs when the button is toggled inside of our function ready, we will set process unhandled input to false. However, when we are toggled, so function toggled on our button pressed, we will set the process unhandled input to our button press, which will be either true or false. We also need to prompt the user to provide a new input. So if the button is pressed, we will set our text of the button to awaiting input. Now, if we press play, if we press our up button, it will say awaiting input. We also need to go ahead and apply the same script to our down button. Now let's create the function for accepting the new input. So unhandled input event. We'll check if event dot pressed. We will first off erase the current event that this button holds. So dot action erase events action, which is the variable we set before and input dot action add event. So we need to add the new event that the user enters with the corresponding action and the event. And I made a mistake. These need to be input map. Now we can set our button press back to false. So we will toggle it off. We will release focus from our button. We also need to change the text of the button to now show the new input. So function update text. We will simply set the text to the input map dot action get events action. Then we need to get the first index of that action dot as text. And now we will simply update our text in the unhandled input event. Now let's quickly check again what our input map is. So we have an up input and a down input. So in our action for our up, we will write capitalize up since it is our input map and then a down for our down. If we press play now and I click on our button and I press up, we'll have a W key and then down we'll have our S key. And I can also change these as much as I would like. However, if I now close down the app and I restart it, those inputs are lost. So to create that save system, let's go and create a new script on our input mapper. Let's also head over to our project, project settings in our general, let's type in custom directory. We will turn on custom directory and we'll name our directory. I'll just call it gwiz input mapper tutorial. This is where it will be saved in our app data. Now in here, Let's create a new variable, which will be a constant, which will be our path to our key maps. So we'll set key maps path to user key maps dot data or dot date variable key maps, which will be our current key maps in our RAM. We'll set this to a new dictionary. And once again, we do not need our process function inside of our ready function. We will first do a for loop for action in input map dot get action. So we will get all of the actions inside of our input map. 
we will first check if the input map dot action get events and that particular action that we are on in the for loop if the size is not equal to zero so if there is an input there we will need to add that to our key maps so in our key maps with that corresponding action we will simply set this to the get events action with the index of zero so the first index so let's say you have an action that is up and you have a corresponding input which is the w key so it will assign that w key to that corresponding action now it's going to create a new function called save key map so we will save to that file path that we went over before so file we'll get file access dot open that key maps path we will open with a file access to write we will then get file store variable key maps and true then we will close off that file now to load in that data let's go and create a new function called load key map if not that file access exists so if the file does not exist in key maps path then we will simply save the key map and then return however if it does exist we will create a new variable called file we'll set this to a similar file access to this however we will be reading then our variable temp key map so we will create a temporary key map variable to then transfer to our key maps variable we'll set this to file dot get variable true as dictionary then file dot close now we need to assign those temporary key maps to the new key map so we'll create a new for action in key maps dot keys we then need to check if that temporary key map has that action so dot has action if it does we need to assign it to the key map so key maps action we'll get temporary key map action then input map dot action erase events like we did before so we'll erase that action we then need to reset that action by typing input map dot action add event we will add to that corresponding action the action in the key maps and finally in our ready function let's go ahead and load key map and now after we've loaded in that key map we need to update our buttons to show the proper inputs so assuming we only have these types of buttons inside of our input mapper so we have no other objects we just have buttons we will check for n in get children then we simply need to n dot update text so we'll run the update text function and now heading back over to our button scripts we need to actually save the new inputs as we are entering them so we will first reference our input mapper dot key maps so that key maps variable that we made before we need to reference the exact action that we have in this button and we'll set that to the new event so now we have just overwritten that action in the key maps variable so finally let's save by typing input mapper dot save key map and since i already have w and s in my up and down when i press play it will first off show that w and s key but now if i change this to say e and i close my game and i'll restart it it will be e and as you can see that data file is saved inside of my app data roaming and my g was input mapper tutorial anyways guys i hope this was very helpful if you have questions or comments, please leave them down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.